Brought to you by wikivd.com David Ortiz David Americo Ortiz Arias, nicknamed Big Papi, is a retired Dominican-American professional baseball designated hitter, an occasional first baseman who played 20 Major League Baseball seasons with the Minnesota Twins and Boston Red Sox. During his 14 seasons with the Red Sox he was a 10-time All-Star, a 3-time World Series champion and 7-time Silver Slugger winner. Ortiz also holds the Red Sox single-season record for home runs with 54 which he set during the 2006 season. Originally signed by the Seattle Mariners in 1992 Ortiz was traded to the Minnesota Twins in 1996 where he played six seasons. Ortiz was released by the Twins and signed with the Boston Red Sox in 2003 where he spent the remainder of his career. In Boston, Ortiz established himself as one of the most powerful sluggers of all time. He was instrumental in the team ending its 86-year World Series championship drought in 2004 as well as during successful championship runs in 2007 and 2013. Ortiz was also the MVP of the 2013 World Series. Ortiz finished his career with 541 home runs, which ranks 17th on the MLB all-time home run list 1,768 RBIs and a .286 batting average. Among designated hitters he is the all-time leader in MLB history for home runs runs batted in and hits, regarded as one of the best clutch hitters of all time. Ortiz had 11 career walk-off home runs during the regular season and two during the postseason. Early Life Ortiz was born on November 18, 1975 in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic as the oldest of four children of Enrique Ortiz and Angela Rosa Arias. As a boy, he followed the careers of standout pitcher Ramon Martinez and his younger brother Pedro, attending games whenever he could and building a friendship with Pedro that would only grow. Over the years, he graduated from Estudio S. Ballet High School in the Dominican Republic, and was a standout baseball and basketball player there minor leagues. On November 28, 1992 Ortiz was signed by the Seattle Mariners just 10 days after his 17th birthday, who listed him as David Arias. He made his professional debut in 1994, for the Mariners of the Arizona League batting .246 with two home runs and 20 RBI. By 1995, he had them prove those numbers to .332 with four home runs and 37 RBI. In 1996 he was promoted to the single-A Wisconsin Timber Rattlers of the Midwest League a Mariners farm team. He established himself as one of the Mariners' best hitting prospects batting .322 with 18 home runs and 93 RBI. Ortiz also impressed fans, and Mariners players like Alex Rodriguez alike, with a strong performance in an impromptu home run derby that took place following a failed Mariners promotion where the Timber Rattlers were supposed to have played an exhibition game against the MLB club in front of their home fans in Wisconsin. Also in Wisconsin Ortiz met his future wife Tiffany who led David to become a fan of the nearby Green Bay Packers NFL team a devotion that would become lifelong. Baseball America named Ortiz the most exciting player in the Midwest League, as well as its best defensive first baseman for 1996. Despite his strong year in the Mariners system on September 13, 1996 David was traded to the Minnesota Twins as the player to be named later to complete an earlier transaction. For Dave Hollins, when he arrived in Minnesota he informed the team that he preferred to be listed as David Ortiz using his paternal family name rather than Arias. 
which was his maternal family name. Referring to the switch, sports writer J. Yaffe called Arias Ortiz literally the player to be named later. Ortiz rose quickly through the Twins' system in 1997. Though he started with the high A Fort Myers miracle he quickly progressed through AA to the AAA Salt Lake Buzz. At the three levels Ortiz combined to hit .317 with 31 home runs and 124 RBI earning a September call-up to the Twins MLB club. 1997 Ortiz made his major league debut for the Twins on September 2, 1997. He got into 15 games in September batting .327 in 49 at-bats. He recorded his first major league hit in his second game on September 3rd. With an eighth-inning pinch hit double against the Chicago Cubs, he hit his first major league home run on September 14 against the Texas Rangers. Off-pitcher Julio Santana going 3-for-4 with two walks in the game overall. In 49 at-bats, Ortiz batted .327 with one home run and six RBI. 1998 In 1998 Ortiz entered the season with his sights set on playing as the regular first baseman. For the Twins, however Ortiz's playing style was somewhat different than the approach favored by manager Tom Kelly which placed a premium on avoiding strikeouts and great defense. While Kelly worked with Ortiz on his defense he hit well, batting .306 through May 9 before fracturing his wrist and going on the disabled list. He returned to the Twins in July the following a rehab assignment to AAA and finished the season. With the team, he ended his rookie year strong batting .360 in September. All told he hit .277 with 9 home runs and 46 RBI in 86 games. 1999 In 1999 Ortiz figured to be a fixture in the lineup. But after a tough spring training which saw him bat only .137 he was sent down to the AAA Salt Lake Buzz as the sure-handed rookie Doug Minkovic earned the first base job. It was becoming apparent that manager Tom Kelly preferred veteran players, or those who fit into his small ball and good defense philosophy. Something Ortiz would later be vocal about after his days with the Twins. While Ortiz tore through minor league pitching to the tune of a .315 average with 30 home runs, and 110 RBI Twins first baseman would go on to hit just .245 with 11 homers and 69 RBI all season. Twins designated hitters did not fare much better batting a combined .259 with 14 home runs and 82 RBI. Ortiz's strong season in AAA was too much for even Kelly to ignore. So Ortiz again earned a September call-up in 1999 but it did not go well, as David struck out 12 times in 20 at-bats and did not register a hit. 2000 By 2000 with the Twins coming off consecutive seasons of 94, 92 and 97 losses, Ortiz's bat could not be buried in the minor leagues much longer. After playing only sparingly, during the season's first two months by June 2000 he finally established himself as an MLB regular. However Ortiz played primarily at designated hitter as manager Kelly Stuck, with the veteran Ron Coomer at first base. When Ortiz homered on June 9 against the Milwaukee Brewers it was his first MLB home run in more than a year. On September 7 he hit his first Major League Grand Slam at Fenway Park against Boston Red Sox pitcher Ramon Martinez, one of his childhood heroes. From the Dominican Republic, as his playing time increased his stats improved. Despite his slow start, he finished at .282 with 10 home runs and 63 RBI. 
His 36 doubles were second on the team to Matt Lawton's 44. Despite Ortiz having almost 200 and fewer plate appearances, David's .364 on base percentage was fourth on the team among players with more than 100 plate appearances. 2001 Ortiz began the 2001 season as the regular DH and started the year strong batting .311, with six home runs and 18 RBI through May 4. For the first time in years, the Twins were a contender thanks to a hot start helped by Ortiz hitting. However, another wrist fracture landed Ortiz back on the disabled list and he did not return until July. It was apparent the injury affected his production as he batted just .202 upon his return. He finished the year with a disappointing .234 average however the 11 home runs he hit over the season's final two months offered a glimmer of hope for the future. Despite their hot start the Twins ultimately did not qualify for the postseason, but did win a very respectable 85 games. It was the franchise's first winning season since 1992. At the end of the season longtime Twins manager Tom Kelly retired and Ron Gardenhire took over the reins. 2002 The offseason proved very difficult for Ortiz as on New Year's Day 2002. His mother died following a car accident. Gardenhire reached out and helped Ortiz deal with the tragic death and Ortiz prepared hard for the coming baseball season. Both Sad and his mother never saw him play at his best and determined to reach new heights. When the season began Ortiz battled knee injuries. It was a tale of two seasons for David, as his .240 average with five homers and 33 RBI before the All-Star break was disappointing. But after the All-Star break Ortiz quietly turned in one of the better second halves in baseball. Batting .297 with 15 home runs and 42 RBI. On August 16, he hit a memorable home run off his friend Pedro Martinez at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, hitting an inside cut fastball into the upper deck. On September 25, he hit the first walk-off home run of his career against the Cleveland Indians. He finished the 2002 season batting .272 with 20 home runs and 75 RBI. At this point in his career, the home run and RBI totals were both career bests. However, as he batted only .203 against left-handed pitching Ortiz still was not always guaranteed to start if a tough lefty would be on the mound. His career year coincided with the Twins qualifying for the postseason as the team won 94 games and upset the Oakland Athletics in the division series before falling in the 2002 American League Championship Series to the eventual World Series winning Anaheim Angels. Ortiz batted .276 in his first postseason with four RBI. His ninth inning double in the decisive Game 5 of the division series put the Twins ahead 5-1 in a game they would hold on to win 5-4. The series-winning RBI was the first of what would be many clutch postseason hits in Ortiz's career. After the season the small market twins faced a decision on Ortiz who had made $950,000 and would likely have been granted around $2 million for 2003 by an arbitrator, rather than negotiate a contract to go to arbitration the twins instead decided to release Ortiz as a cost-cutting move on December 16 after being unable to swing a trade for him, in parts of six seasons totaling 455 games with the Twins Ortiz hit 58 home runs and had 238 RBIs. Ironically the player who replaced Ortiz on the Twins roster Jose Morbin would never play in a game for the team. 2003. Ortiz took the news of his release from the Twins hard, 
He had just had his second child in 2001, and now worried he might be out of baseball. However, Ortiz had a chance encounter with Pedro Martinez at a restaurant in the Dominican Republic, and Martinez remembered the impressive home run he had given up to Ortiz in August 2002. Excited at the prospect of his friend joining him on the Boston Red Sox, Pedro began calling several Red Sox team officials to request that the team sign Ortiz. On January 22, Ortiz signed a non-guaranteed free agent contract with the Red Sox that would be worth $1.25 million if he made the team. New Red Sox general manager Theo Epstein envisioned Ortiz as one of several candidates to fill a void at first base. Competition was fierce, as the team had a logjam of players who could play the position or at designated hitter. Sabermetrics favorite Jeremy Jambi was widely expected to get most of the playing time. But also in the mix were primary third baseman Bill Mueller, Shea Hillenbrand and Kevin Miller. The team's best hitter outfielder Manny Ramirez figured to DH at times also. When the season started all of them made the team including Ortiz. Because of the logjam, Ortiz did not play steadily during the first two months of the season. He hit his first home run, with his new team on April 27 at Anaheim a go-ahead shot to break a 14th inning tie in an eventual 6-4 win but batted only .212 in April. By May, he had raised his average to .272. Ortiz became frustrated over his limited playing time, seeing a similarity to what had happened to him in Minnesota, especially considering that Jeremy Jambi was only batting .125 on May 1. After expressing his frustration to the media, Pedro Martinez pulled his friend aside to defuse the situation then asked manager Grady Little to ensure Ortiz always be in the lineup. When he was pitching, as Ortiz bat heated up in May the Red Sox finally broke the log jam. When they traded Shea Hillenbrand to the Arizona Diamondbacks on May 29. On June 1, manager Grady Little benched Jambi who was still hitting only .185. These two moves allowed Ortiz to become the everyday designated hitter. As a regular, Ortiz finally had the breakout year he had envisioned. After hitting .299, with 10 home runs in the season's first half he turned on the power in the second half, hitting 21 home runs in 63 games. On July 26, he delivered a walk-off hit against the rival New York Yankees. He would add his first walk-off homer as a member of the Red Sox on September 23rd. Against the Baltimore Orioles, he finished the season with 31 home runs, 101 RBIs, and a .288 average, finishing fifth in the American League MVP voting as the Red Sox won the AL Wild Card and qualified for the postseason. In the 2003 postseason, Ortiz struggled in the ALDS against the Oaklanders until Game 4, when he hit a two-run double in the bottom of the eighth inning off closer Keith Falk to turn a 4-3 deficit into a 5-4 Red Sox lead and eventual victory. In Game 1 of the ALCS against the rival New York Yankees, Ortiz hit his first career postseason home run. He finished with two home runs and six RBIs in the ALCS, including a solo home run in the eighth inning of the decisive Game 7 that gave the Red Sox a 5-2 lead at the time. However, the Red Sox would go on to blow the lead in the bottom of the inning, and Boston lost the series in heartbreaking fashion on Aaron Boone's infamous extra inning walk-off home run that instead sent the Yankees to the 2003 World Series. 2004. In the offseason Ortiz was eligible for salary arbitration once again but the Red Sox agreed 
with him on a $4.6 million salary for the 2004 season avoiding hearings. Prior to the agreement, Ortiz and his agent had submitted a figure of $5 million while the Red Sox had counted with $4.2 million, so the agreement split the difference. Once the 2004 season started, Ortiz wasted no time picking up right where he left off with the bat. On May 28, Ortiz hit his 100th career home run a grand slam off Joel Pinero of the Seattle Mariners at Fenway Park. Also in May, Ortiz signed a two-year contract extension with the Red Sox worth $12.5 million. He batted .304 with 23 home runs and 78 RBI in the season's first half was named an All-Star for the first time in his career, and hit a long home run in the All-Star game off Carl Pavano. Ortiz was suspended for three games in July, after being ejected following an incident in a July 16 game against the Angels in which he threw several bats onto the field that came close to hitting umpires Bill Hone and Mark Carlson. Ortiz finished the 2004 season with 41 home runs and 139 RBIs while batting .301, with an on-base plus slugging of .983. He finished second in the American League in both home runs and RBIs, and finished fourth in American League MVP voting. He also earned his first Silver Slugger award, for his outstanding performance at designated hitter. In addition, Ortiz and teammate Manny Ramirez became the first pair of AL teammates to hit 40 home runs, have 100 RBIs, and bat.300 since the Yankees' Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in 1931. Together, they hit back to back home runs six times, tying the Major League single season mark set by the Detroit Tigers' Hank Greenberg and Rudy York, and later matched by the Chicago White Sox Frank Thomas and Maglio Ordinez. The duo quickly became arguably the best hitting tandem of the decade. In the 2004 postseason, Ortiz elevated his play to a new level. He had multiple game-winning hits to help Boston advance through the rounds. In the 2004 ALDS, he hit a series-winning walk-off home run off Jared Washburn in the 10th inning of Game 3 to knock out the Anaheim Angels. In the ALCS against the New York Yankees, the Red Sox quickly fell behind zero games to three, a deficit that had never been surmounted in baseball history. Ortiz almost single-handedly paved the way for history, as he hit a walk-off two-run home run against Paul Quantrill in the 12th inning of Game 4, and a walk-off single off of Esteban Loaiser in the 14th inning of Game 5. His heroics namely batting .387 with three home runs, and 11 RBI in the series earned him MVP honors the first time a DH had ever won that award as the Red Sox came back to win in seven games. In the World Series versus the St. Louis Cardinals, Ortiz set the tone. For the four-game sweep as he hit a three-run home run off of Woody Williams in the first inning of Game 1 at Fenway Park. He hit .308 in the series with one home run and four RBI as the Red Sox swept the Cardinals to end the curse of the Bambino by winning their first World Series championship in 86 years. Overall, Ortiz batted .400 in the 2004 postseason with five home runs and 23 RBIs. 2005 In 2005, Ortiz set new career highs with 47 home runs and 148 RBIs. He batted .300, with an ops of 1.001. On June 2, his three-run homer turned a 4-3 deficit into a 6-4 victory over the Baltimore Orioles. On September 6, his 38th home run of the year beat the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. On September 29, 
His eighth-inning home run against the Toronto Blue Jays tied the game at four. Then his ninth-inning single in his very next at-bat gave Boston the win. For all of his late-inning heroics, Red Sox ownership would present Ortiz with a plaque proclaiming him the greatest clutch hitter in the history of the Boston Red Sox. He led the American League in RBIs while finishing second in home runs and third in ops. Ortiz finished second in the American League MVP voting to Alex Rodriguez while leading the Red Sox to their third consecutive playoff appearance, where they lost in the first round to the eventual champion White Sox. For the second consecutive season Ortiz was named an All-Star and won the Silver Slugger Award. He also won his first Hank Aaron Award as the Outstanding Hitter in the American League. 2006 The 2006 season was another banner year for Ortiz. On April 10, the Red Sox announced Ortiz signed a four-year $52 million contract extension with the team. The contract also included a team option for a fifth year. His clutch hitting continued. Over the two months of June and July he had five walk-off hits, three of which were home runs. Ortiz hit his 200th career home run on June 29 against Duane Sanchez of the New York Mets. At Fenway Park, he posted his best month of the season in July batting .339 with 14 home runs. On September 20 at Fenway Park, Ortiz tied Jimmy Fox single-season Red Sox home run record of 50 set in 1938. In the sixth inning against Minnesota Twins Booth Bonza, on September 21, Ortiz broke the record by hitting his 51st home run off Johan Santana of the Twins. The home run was also his 44th of the season as a designated hitter, breaking his own American League single-season record. Ortiz finished 2006 with a career-high 54 home runs to set a new Red Sox record and had 137 RBIs while batting .287. With an ops of 1.049, he led the American League in both home runs and RBIs, and finished third in ops. He finished third in the American League MVP voting behind Justin Morneau and Derek Jeter. Despite his outstanding campaign, however, the Red Sox did not qualify for the postseason. 2007 In 2007, Ortiz was instrumental in leading the Red Sox to their seventh World Series title. In the regular season, he had 35 home runs and 117 RBIs while batting a career-best .332 placing him in the top 10 in the American League in all three categories. In addition, he hit 52 doubles, led the American League in extra base hits and finished second in ops at 1.066. His .445 on-base percentage led the league, an all-star for the fourth consecutive season. Ortiz finished fourth in the American League MVP voting and captured the Silver Slugger at DH once again as the Red Sox won the AL East. In the postseason, Ortiz again kept up the clutch hitting. He batted .714 against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in the division series with two home runs. Then after batting .292, with a home run against the Cleveland Indians in the 2007 American League Championship Series, he hit .333 in the 2007 World Series with 4 RBI. Combined Ortiz batted .370 with 3 home runs, and 10 RBIs as Boston swept the Colorado Rockies, to win they were second World Series championship in 4 years. 2008 in 2008 Ortiz started slowly after suffering a wrist injury which caused him to miss several weeks. He played in a total of 109 games and finished the season with 23 home runs and 89 RBIs while batting 264. 
Despite his struggles, Ortiz was named to his fifth All-Star team. In the playoffs, Ortiz batted just .186 over two rounds as the Red Sox ultimately fell to the Tampa Bay Rays in the 2008 American League Championship Series. 2009 Ortiz struggled early in the 2009 season hitting only .206 with no home runs and 30 strikeouts in his first 34 games. He did not hit his first home run of the season until May 22 off Brett Cecil of the Toronto Blue. Jays ending a career-high 178 homeless at bat streak. In June Ortiz broke out of his slump by hitting seven home runs with 22 RBI. He hit seven home runs in each of July and August, including the 300th of his career against Luke Hotchever of the Kansas City Royals at Fenway Park on July 9. On September 17, Ortiz hit his 270th career home run as a DH off Jose Arredondo of the Los Angeles Angels, breaking the all-time record held by Frank Thomas. However, Ortiz finished the season with just a .238 average to go along with his 28 home runs and 99 RBIs. He also struggled in the postseason with just one hit in 12 at-bats. During 2009 Ortiz did, however, play first base for the first time since the 2007 season. 2010 In 2010 Ortiz again got off to a slow start and questions loomed large about his future. Ortiz batted just .143 in April with one home run and four RBI. But Ortiz returned to his all-star form beginning with a hot May and finished at .270 with 32 home runs and 102 RBIs. For the year, his home run and RBI totals were both in the top 10 in the American League. At the all-star game Ortiz won the home run derby contest defeating Florida Marlins shortstop Hanley Ramirez in the final. A strong September, where Ortiz drove in 23 runs, pushed him over the 100 RBI mark for the first time in three seasons. But despite Ortiz's resurgence, the Red Sox finished third in the AL East and failed to qualify for the postseason. At the end of the season, the Red Sox announced that they would pick up the $12.50 team option on his contract for 2011, though Ortiz had hoped for a multi-year extension instead. 2011 In 2011 Ortiz continued to produce batting .309 with 29 home runs and 96 RBIs. He passed several milestones during the year. On April 2, he set the record for RBIs by a designated hitter with 1,004 surpassing Edgar Martinez. Then on May 21, Ortiz became only the fifth player to hit 300 home runs as a member of the Red Sox, joining Ted Williams, Carl Yasemski, Jim Rice and Dwight Evans. On July 15, Ortiz was suspended for four games, for his part in a brawl that took place on July 8 in a game against the Baltimore Orioles. Ortiz charged Orioles pitcher Kevin Gregor after a brushback pitch and an exchange of words, triggering a bench-clearing brawl. In 2011 Ortiz made his seventh All-Star team. He also earned his fifth Silver Slugger award at the end of the year and on October 20. Major League Baseball announced that Ortiz was the winner of the Roberto Clemente Award. However, the Red Sox again failed to qualify for the postseason. Also at season's end as Ortiz, and the Red Sox could not agree on a contract extension during the year Ortiz headed for free agency for the first time since being released by the Twins in 2003. However, on December 7 he accepted the Red Sox offer of salary arbitration, and the two sides again avoided hearings by agreeing to a $14.575 million figure for the 2012 season. 2012 
2012 began like Ortiz had his sights set on MVP contention again as he hit .405 over the season's first month with six home runs and 20 RBI. On July 4 at O.C.O. Coliseum in Oakland, Ortiz hit his 400th career home run off of A.J. Griffin of the Oakland Athletics. However, on July 16, Ortiz suffered an injury to his right Achilles tendon and was placed on the DL on July 19. He returned on August 24 but returned to the DL on August 27 after playing just one game. He finished the season with 23 home runs and 60 RBIs while batting .318 in 90 games. On the date of his injury the Red Sox were 46-44. However without Ortiz the Red Sox created going 23-49 over the last two and a half months of the season to finish last in the Al East. With free agency again looming, Ortiz and the Red Sox agreed to terms on a two-year contract with $26 million with incentives that could push the total value of the deal to $30 million. The deal was made official on November 5, 2013. Ortiz rebounded from his injury to post a strong 2013 campaign as he once again guided the Red Sox to a first-place finish in the AL East. During the regular season, he hit 30 home runs, had 103 RBIs, and batted .309. He finished in the top 10 in all the categories in the American League. On April 20, before the first game played at Fenway Park since the Boston Marathon bombings, and his first since August 2012 after an Achilles tendon injury, Ortiz spoke emotionally to the crowd and stated this is our fucking city and no one is going to dictate our freedom. Stay strong. Ortiz reached several career milestones in 2013, including his 500th career double on July 2 and his 2000th career hit on September 4. On July 10, Ortiz passed Harold Baines to become the all-time leader for hits by a DH with 1689. On July 27, Ortiz was ejected by home plate umpire Tim Timmins for arguing balls and strikes in a game against the Baltimore Orioles. After his ejection Ortiz used his bat to smash a press box phone in the dugout. Major League Baseball decided not to suspend Ortiz for the incident. In the postseason Ortiz hit five home runs and 13 RBIs while batting .353. To lead the Red Sox to a World Series championship the franchise is eight. In Game 2 of the American League Division Series against the Tampa Bay Rays, he hit two home runs off of Rays ace pitcher David Price. In Game 2 of the American League Championship Series versus the Detroit Tigers, Ortiz hit a dramatic, game-tying grand slam off reliever Joaquin Benoit in the bottom of the eighth inning, helping propel the Red Sox to victory. In the World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals, Ortiz hit home runs in both games 1 and 2 had 6 RBIs, and batted .688 as the Red Sox won the series 4-2. As a result of his performance, Ortiz was awarded the World Series Most Valuable Player Award. Ortiz gained several new nicknames from the media and his teammates as a result of his great postseason play such as Sonora Octuba and Cooperstown. He finished third in Boston's Merrill race that year with 560 write-in votes. He also finished 10th in Al MVP voting the first season he garnered votes since 2007. 2014. On March 23, 2014, Ortiz signed a one year $16 million contract extension for the 2015 season. The extension also included two team option years to potentially keep him under contract with the Red Sox through the 2017 season. Once the season started, Ortiz continued to hit well 
homering 35 times to go along with 104 RBI and a .263 average. He again placed in the top 10 in the American League in both home runs and RBIs. During a game against the Tampa Bay Rays on May 31, Ortiz was hit by a pitch from future Red Sox pitcher David Price leading to both benches being warned. Price later hit Mike Harp which led to both benches clearing and an enraged Ortiz shouting at Price. On June 29 at Yankee Stadium Ortiz homered off New York Yankees pitcher Chase Whitley for his 450th career home run. In a Boston Globe article, Red Sox great Carl Yastrzemski called David Ortiz the second greatest hitter in club history, stating I would say as a hitter I would say H.E.S. next to Ted Williams. 2015 In 2015 Ortiz hit 37 home runs and had 108 RBIs while batting .273. He finished in the top 10 in the American League in both home runs and RBIs for the eighth time in his career. On April 19 in a game at Fenway Park vs. the Baltimore Orioles, Ortiz was ejected for arguing a check swing call. While arguing, Ortiz slightly bumped into umpire John Tumpain. Two days later MLB suspended Ortiz one game and fined him an undisclosed amount. On July 14 in an announcement prior to the MLB All-Star Game at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati Ortiz was selected as one of the Franchise Four of the Boston Red Sox. The selection of the Franchise Four was determined by online voting by fans on the MLB.com website, along with Ortiz Ted Williams Carl Yastrzemski. An Ortiz friend Pedro Martinez were selected as the four greatest players in Boston Red Sox history. On September 5 at Fenway Park, Ortiz hit his 30th home run of the season off of Jerome Williams of the Philadelphia Phillies. This marked the ninth time that Ortiz hit 30 or more home runs in a season, the most in Red Sox history. On September 12 in a game against the Tampa Bay Rays, at Tropicana Field Ortiz hit his 500th career home run off of Rays pitcher Matt Moore. He became only the 27th player in MLB history to reach that milestone. 2016 On November 18, 2015 his 40th birthday, Ortiz announced on the website the Players' Tribune that he would retire following the 2016 season. In the final season of his career Ortiz hit 38 home runs and had 127 RBIs while batting .315. He finished in the top 10 in the American League in home runs and RBIs for the ninth time in his career. He finished tied for first in the American League in RBIs. With Edwin Incarnation, Ortiz led the American League and Major League Baseball with a 1.021 ops and 48 doubles. Throughout the season opposing teams honored Ortiz by presenting him with gifts. Some humorous when the Red Sox visited similar to how teams had done when other stars like Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera were in their final season. For example, the New York Yankees presented Ortiz with a painting of him at home plate in Yankee Stadium, as well as a book of notes to Ortiz written by several former and current Yankees. When it was their turn the Baltimore Orioles presented Ortiz with the mangled dugout phone he had destroyed with a bat from his 2013 outburst. On May 14, at Fenway Park Ortiz hit a walk-off double to lead the Red Sox to a 6-5 victory over the Houston Astros. It was his 20th career walk-off hit. The double was the 600th of Ortiz's career, making him the 15th player all-time to reach the milestone. He also joined Hank Aaron and Barry Bonds is only the third player in MLB history with at least 500 career home runs and 600 career doubles. 
on August 24 in a game against the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field. Ortiz hit his 30th home run of the season. He became the oldest MLB player to ever do so. In the same game, he also reached 100 RBI for the season. It was the tenth time in his career he reached both milestones a Red Sox record. He hit his 625th career double two days later against the Royals passing Hank Aaron for tenth place all-time. On October 2, during a pre-game ceremony at Fenway Park for Ortiz prior to the final game of the season, the Red Sox announced that his uniform number 34 would be retired during the 2017 season. Additionally, Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker was on hand to announce the bridge that carries Brookline Avenue over the Massachusetts Turnpike would be dedicated in honor of Ortiz. Ortiz's strong play in his final season was enough to get the Red Sox into the postseason, but a first-round sweep at the hands of the Cleveland Indians in the American League Division Series ended the Red Sox season on October 10. Following the loss at Fenway Park, Ortiz came out and saluted the Boston fans in a tearful goodbye before leaving the field. On October 26, Major League Baseball announced that Ortiz had won his second Hank Aaron Award as the outstanding offensive player in the American League. He was the 2016 Assurance MLB This Year in Baseball Award winner for Best Hitter his third time. In addition, Ortiz also placed sixth in voting for 2016 AL MVP. Personal Life Ortiz's nickname, Big Pappy, originates from his habit of calling people whose names he can't remember Pappy. The nickname was given to him by Red Sox broadcaster Jerry Remy. Each time Ortiz crossed the plate after hitting a home run, he would look up and pointed both index fingers to the sky in tribute to his mother Angela Rosa Arias, who died in a car crash in January 2002 at the age of 46. Ortiz also has a tattoo of his mother on his biceps. Ortiz and his wife Tiffany have three children. Since marrying Tiffany, he has become a fan of the Green Bay Packers. In April 2013, Ortiz announced that he and his wife were separating but they later reconciled. Ortiz's main residence is in western Massachusetts. On June 11, 2008, Ortiz became a United States citizen at John F. Kennedy Library in Boston. Ortiz has received about $4.5 million in endorsements over the years. In April 2007, Sporting goods company Reebok debuted the Big Pappy 10M mid-baseball cleat which Ortiz first used during the 2007 MLB All-Star Game in San Francisco, California. In October 2009, Ortiz opened a nightclub called 4040 in his native Dominican Republic. In April 2010, rapper and producer Jay-Z and his business partner Juan Perez sued Ortiz for trademark infringement alleging that the name of Ortiz nightclub was stolen from JZS chain of sports clubs in New York. In March 2011 Ortiz reached a settlement deal with Jay-Z and Perez. Ortiz's daughter Alex Ortiz sang the national anthem before the 2016 Boston Red Sox home opener on April 11, 2016. On May 21, 2017, Ortiz received an honorary degree at a Boston University commencement. Charity Work In 2007, Ortiz founded the David Ortiz Children's Fund to support a range of his favorite causes and help children from Boston to the Dominican Republic and beyond. In 2008, Ortiz released his own charity wine label called Vintage Pappy which raised $150,000 for the David Ortiz Children's Fund. Additionally, Ortiz recently joined UNICEF Kid Power as a brand ambassador Kid Power champion for a global mission in Burkina.
alleged positive performance enhancing drug test in 2003. On July 30, 2009, the New York Times, citing anonymous sources, reported that Ortiz was among the group of over 100 major league players on a list compiled by federal investigators that allegedly tested positive for performance enhancing drugs during Major League Baseball survey testing conducted in spring training of 2003. The survey testing was agreed to by Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association to determine the extent of performance-enhancing drug use among players before permanent testing was officially implemented starting in 2004. As part of the agreement, the results of the survey testing were supposed to remain confidential and no suspensions or penalties would be issued to any player testing positive. On August 8, 2009, Ortiz held a press conference before a game at Yankee Stadium and denied ever buying or using steroids and suggested the positive test might have been due to his use of supplements and vitamins at the time. When asked which supplements he had been taking, Ortiz said he did not know. Ortiz was accompanied at the press conference by Michael Weiner, the general counsel of the Major League Baseball Players Association, because the list of players was seized as part of a government investigation and is currently under court-ordered seal pending the outcome of litigation. Weiner said the players' union was unable to provide Ortiz with any details about his test result including what substance he tested positive for. On the same day both Major League Baseball and the Major League Baseball Players Association issued statements pointing out that, because of several factors any player appearing on the list compiled by federal investigators in 2003 did not necessarily test positive for performance-enhancing drugs. Among those factors were that the total number of players said to be on the list far exceeded the number of collected specimens that tested positive. In addition, there were questions raised regarding the lab that performed the testing and their interpretation of the positive tests. Also, the statement pointed out that certain legal supplements that were available over the counter at the time could cause a positive test result. On October 2, 2016 at a press conference, at Fenway Park MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred said it was entirely possible Ortiz did not test positive during the MLB survey drug testing in 2003. The commissioner stated that the alleged failed tests should not harm Ortiz's legacy, and that there were legitimate scientific questions about whether or not those were truly positives. He also said that it is unfair for Hall of Fame voters to consider leaks rumors innuendo and non-confirmed positive test results when assessing a player. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?